Australia's army has been called in to help mop things up after Brisbane was smashed by an extreme hailstorm described as a catastrophic event. Large hailstones propelled by winds of up to 140 kilometers an hour slammed into buildings and vehicles, leaving a trail of destruction. is calling the supercell one of the worst you'll see anywhere in Australia. It's dumped a month's worth of average rainfall in just half an hour. Now, there are, the reports started coming in about tennis ball-sized uh, hail, and then it went up to, uh, to softball-sized hail. I saw nature having labor pains, supernatural signs and changes that can't be explained by men. Worldwide disasters that we're witnessing right now I see as labor pains in nature, which are going to become more and more frequent and more intense the closer we get to the birth of the kingdom of God. A mysterious flame brightened the night sky for a few seconds in central Russia, leaving residents baffled about its origin. This video was captured on a driver's dash cam. The sky suddenly become red, then turn into a massive bright yellow spot. Now it blazed for several seconds before going out. So far, scientists have no clear explanation as to what caused the flash. Back to this country and again tonight. Officially, as of this morning, temperatures were below freezing at least somewhere in all 50 states. And yes, that includes Hawaii. The city in a state of emergency, an entire year's worth of snow in just days. From the air, you could see it coming, a huge wall of snow moving into the city. And this time-lapse video shows how it just hasn't stopped. I've lived in Buffalo my whole life and I've never seen it like that. Uh, it was scary. A mother of six has collapsed and is now in hospital, suffering from hypothermia and a blockage to her heart after plunging into a backyard sinkhole. Christina was hanging the washing for an elderly friend when a three metre deep sinkhole swallowed her up. Two men were lucky to escape injury as their car was swallowed by a sinkhole in East China's Fujian province this week. The skies opened up over the Bay Area on Wednesday, causing the streets of San Francisco to do the same. The biggest of at least three sinkholes measured 30 feet wide and 10 feet deep. The downpour the past two days has been so huge right now. Possible sinkhole in Alhambra. A sinkhole of massive size out here. Take a look at this and they've got crews out here working to fix this hole. Now it's also in a very unusual spot. There's actually a bridge right there. In East Los Angeles, a hole opened up the sidewalk about 10 feet deep. A scene of devastation in California. Waking up to a wall of mud. Homes are now buried after one of the most ferocious storms in years swept across the coast of America. An audibly shocked LA resident struggles to rein in their language as a tornado touches down in the city. They are unusual in California. Other tornadoes were sighted across the city, part of a storm system that's pounded Southern California with heavy rain and high winds. The world is in trouble with climate change. Um, the scientists have spoken. It is a, a sign of tremendous change. It's a sign that life history patterns are actually changing pretty much before our eyes.
never before in the history of this country have so many corrupting influences descended upon children at one time. Our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. In an age that's falling apart, you see all the calamities of every prophet of God has predicted wars and rumors of war. All of nature, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, hailstorms, killer heat waves, floods, drastic weather changes are breaking all past records. All the tornadoes, it looks like nature's out of control. That God's word is clearly predicted it would happen. The wrath of God is to be outpoured on this earth through an unleashed fury of nature. Because God is warning mankind that judgment is coming. And these are labor pains. And the closer we get to the birth of his kingdom, the more frequent and intensive we'll get until the birth of the kingdom of God. Tornadoes, hailstorms, floods, and hurricanes are going to pound the earth with such intensity and violence that all of mankind is going to have to admit the world is under supernatural siege. The ends of the world are upon us. This is the hour we've all preached about. And if you're truly spirit-filled, if you're the spirit of Christ, that bears witness with you right now. What I'm saying strikes a chord in your heart. I look at some of you dear gray-haired folks and some of you preachers here. White hair. You've been preaching this for years. And I think this is the most exciting time in the world to watch the last generation unfold. We are the last Christians. And it's the most exciting thing to see all that we've heard and read over the centuries coming to pass right before our eyes. And some of you still sitting there not knowing what's happening. Friends, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I've never seen the global situation this tenuous, with all the earth changes and the man-made catastrophes and the earthquakes, things are accelerating and we're beginning to look at the birth pangs. We're looking at the, the beginnings of sorrows. It seems like the world we're living in is slipping out of control. We are being tested today in Sydney. The police are being tested. The public is being tested. This is what it looks like when terror comes to a city that has never known anything like it. A flag with Arabic writing was pressed to the glass, the Shahada, an Islamic declaration of faith, revealing the gunman's motivation. Then he used his victims as a human shield, forcing them to stand, arms raised, for two hours at a time. After a hostage situation which lasted 17 terrifying hours. And these words are my bullets. I fight with these weapons against oppression to promote peace. As medics brought the injured out on stretchers, it became clear not every hostage had made it out alive. Terrorists stormed a school in Pakistan today. More than 140 students were killed. It appears they targeted the school, which includes grades one through 10, Taliban gunmen massacred more than 100 children and burned some female teachers alive. After seven Taliban gunmen with bombs strapped to their bodies stormed the army's public school. The Taliban going room to room, hunting the students down. The Taliban are trying to topple the Pakistani government and set up their own version of an Islamic state. Just days after a hostage drama in Sydney left three people dead, Australia is in shock after one of its worst mass murders. Eight children have been stabbed to death in the northern city of Cairns. The children were aged between 18 months and 15. Another Nigerian village has suffered a devastating attack in the nation's infamous terrorist group Boko Haram. 
Gunmen stormed the village of Gumsuri on Sunday, burning buildings, killing an estimated 33 people, and kidnapping at least 185. Officials are blaming the murders and kidnappings on Boko Haram, the Islamist terrorist group that's killed thousands of people in the region this year alone. Police say an armed man walked up to two New York Police Department officers sitting inside a patrol car in Brooklyn and opened fire Saturday, killing one and critically injuring a second before running into a nearby subway station and committing suicide. One of the officers was shot in the head. A police officer in Tarpon Springs, Florida, was shot and killed early today. A suspect is in custody. Local reports say police were originally called out for a noise ordinance complaint that the suspect was banging on residential doors at 3 o'clock in the morning. 11 people are recovering in a hospital in the eastern French city of Dijon after police say they were mowed down by a driver. Officials say the driver slammed his car into groups of pedestrians in five parts of the city Sunday evening while shouting the Arabic phrase, Allahu Akbar, which translates to God is the greatest. He then stabbed himself multiple times. Canadian police say the worst mass murder in over half a century in the city of Edmonton was probably an act of domestic violence. The bodies of seven people were found at one house, two of them were children. Another was found at a separate location. Investigators said a man suspected of involvement in the murders later killed himself at a restaurant in a nearby city. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yes, there's a baby in a garbage can. Is it alive? Yes. Okay. Is it breathing? I think so, because he sounds like a cat in distress. And there's still the cord on there, so he's got to be newborn. He's still got an umbilical on his belly button. In the U.S. state of Florida, a man has been arrested for allegedly beheading his own mother on New Year's Eve. The county sheriff's office reportedly charged a 23-year-old Christian Gomez with first-degree murder. Investigators say Gomez was angry over his mother, quote, nagging to put boxes away in the attic. They say Gomez hit his mother over the head with an axe, then cut her head off in the garage and dragged the body to the garbage outside the home. The mother's decapitated body was later found by her older son. A new year, but no let up in the spread of the Ebola virus, especially in Sierra Leone, where the president's asking people to observe a week of fasting and prayer. The statistics are staggering. Known cases globally have now exceeded 20,000. The death tolls nearly 8,000, with 317 deaths since Christmas Eve alone. Southern Italy is experiencing unusually wintry weather. In Rome, Arctic-inspired winds brought temperatures as low as minus 8 degrees Celsius. For the first time in almost 20 years, cities such as Palermo woke up under a white blanket. Motorways across the country were blocked by snow and ice. Dozens of homes have been destroyed as devastating bushfires sweep parts of South Australia. Residents of the Adelaide Hills have been urged to evacuate. The fires broke out yesterday, some sparked by lightning strikes. With conditions described as the worst since 1983, there are fears that further wind changes could accelerate the fire. 911, what's the emergency? Um, yes, uh, this is South East recorded. Street and 44th Avenue. There's a man on fire recorded. in front of the cemetery. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, babe. Babe, babe, let's get out of here. This is scary. A female suicide bomber has blown herself up inside a police station in Istanbul, killing one officer and wounding another. The woman is said to have spoken English as she entered the building, but her nationality and identity were unknown. It's been called the worst terrorist attack in Europe in years, and it has shocked France to the court. Police say black-hooded gunmen shot 12 people dead at the offices of Charlie Hebdo, 10 of them journalists and two others police officers. Officials say mass gunmen stormed the building, shouted God is great in Arabic, and killed multiple people inside. This is an act of an exceptional barbarism here in Paris.
Violent wind in Israel hit the city as the whole region braced for a blizzard. Heavy rain fell and strong winds blew waves that hit the city's shoreline. This storm caused power outages that left tens of thousands cut off from electricity and heating. It's predicted that 12 to 24 hours of snowfall will hit Jerusalem. Earthquakes in Texas felt in and around Dallas. Well, tonight, word of yet another one. Now, 11 earthquakes in just the last 24 hours. And of course, the new concern over what's causing this. In the last 24 hours, nearly a dozen small quakes rattling the entire Dallas-Fort Worth area. The earthquake outbreak continues. Could this be the start of something bigger? Texas officials are working on new emergency plans, getting ready for what might be coming next. A female police officer has been killed in a fresh shooting incident in southern Paris, hours after Islamist gunmen attacked satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo. The officer was confirmed dead after a gunman, armed with an automatic weapon, opened fire in Rue Pierre Brosselet in Mont Rouge, south of the French capital. Her death is likely to further escalate tensions in Paris, coming so soon after the Charlie Hebdo massacre, which killed 12 people, including two policemen. For three days, France has been gripped by an unfolding drama of unprecedented violence. A new shooting has reportedly broken out in eastern Paris. A man armed with a Kalashnikov opened fire at a kosher grocery store. The supermarket was stormed by police 20 minutes after about six explosions were heard at the second siege on the outskirts of Paris. At least five hostages are dead at the kosher supermarket. A hostage taker is also said to have been killed. And now terrorists say that France will see more attacks similar to ones that rocked the country in the past few days. Al-Qaeda linked terrorists have reportedly threatened France with fresh violence. Now ISIL has warned that it will target all the countries that are part of the US-led coalition against the group. Well, Nigeria has also been grappling with a number of deadly terror attacks. Militants from Boko Haram have laid siege on villages in the north, killing hundreds, possibly thousands of people. Reports from the northeastern town of Baga say Boko Haram sacked the town, burning it to the ground and killing more than 2,000 people in Baga and surrounding villages may have been massacred. Baga was now virtually non-existent. That would make the massacre among the most deadly terror attacks in history. At least 12 people have reportedly died and 20 others have been injured when a girl thought to be age 10 blew herself up at a crowded market in Nigeria's northeastern city of Maiduguri. A university student from Melbourne exposed as an Islamic extremist fighter has threatened to spill blood in Australia. A 20-year-old man has been arrested in the United States for an alleged plot to attack the US Capitol building and kill government employees. A plan apparently inspired by ISIS to attack the U.S. Capitol and those inside it. We are following breaking news as the manhunt for terrorists sweeps across Europe. We're getting reports of raids and terror arrests. Two suspected jihadists have been killed in the Belgian city of Vervia in an anti-terror raid as similar operations continued overnight in Brussels and surrounding areas. The investigation was able to establish that this group was about to commit terrorist acts on a grand scale in Belgium and imminently. Protest in Niger's capital, Niamey. Residents of this former French colony are angry over cartoon depictions of the Prophet Muhammad in the French weekly newspaper Charlie Hebdo. They offended our Prophet Muhammad. That's what we didn't like. This is why we asked Muslims to come. Demonstrators also set fire to two churches in the capital. It's the second day of protests that left five people dead on Friday when other churches were burned and Christian homes looted. There was a call to arms over the weekend that is, in any terms, truly frightening. It came from a known Islamic extremist who wants to raise an army to impose Sharia law here in Australia. A horrific new tactic from ISIS, raising a new generation of terrorists. A video released this week from the terror group purports to show a young boy executing two hostages. In the video, a young boy about 10 years old stands before the hostages armed with a handgun, while a bearded ISIS fighter stands next to the boy reciting religious verses. The boy pulls the trigger and appears to shoot both men once in the head then fires several more times as the hostages slump to the ground. But the message from ISIS is clear. They are turning children into killers.
to the Prime Minister of Japan. Although you are more than 8,500 kilometers away from the Islamic State, you willingly have volunteered to take part in this crusade. You have proudly donated 100 million to kill our women and children, to destroy the homes of the Muslims. So the life of this Japanese citizen will cost you 100 million. And in an attempt to stop the expansion of the Islamic State, you also donated another 100 million to train the Murtadin against the Mujahideen. And so the life of this Japanese citizen will cost you another 100 million. And to the Japanese public, just as how your government has made the foolish decision to pay 200 million to fight the Islamic State, you now have 72 hours to pressure your government in making a wise decision by paying the 200 million to save the lives of your citizens. Otherwise, this knife will become your nightmare. Now to Israel, where a Palestinian man stabbed at least nine people on a bus before being shot himself. Israeli police are calling the incident a terror attack. Altogether until now, nine Israelis have been uh, stabbed. We are breaking news story this hour. Kiev has declared high alert across the whole of Ukraine and a state of emergency in the defiant eastern regions. The Kiev are in an uh, armed conflict. The, the entire of Ukraine is now on heightened alert. Uh, meanwhile, uh, here in the east of Ukraine, in Donetsk and Lugansk uh, regions, it's, it's been declared as a state of emergency. Based on their observations, the members of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, Science and Security Board find conditions in the world to be so threatening that they are moving the hands of the doomsday clock two minutes closer to midnight. It is now three minutes to midnight. Today, unchecked climate change and a nuclear arms race resulting from modernization of huge arsenals pose extraordinary and undeniable threats to the continued existence of humanity. And world leaders have failed to act with the speed or on the scale required to protect citizens from potential catastrophe. Countries emitting carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are on the way to profoundly transforming Earth's climate, harming millions upon millions of people with sea level rise, diminished food supplies, and even more droughts, wildfires, and killer storms than we have today. These consequences of a changing climate will test our ingenuity, and the capacity for global leadership. The danger is great. Scientists warn of grave consequences in this century if global temperatures keep rising. Rising ocean levels, deadly extreme weather, and droughts that can harm food production. Record temperatures were spread around the globe, from Europe to North Africa, from the Western United States to Far Eastern Russia and elsewhere. The weather has turned serious tonight, a big area moving in to stay. The air has come from the Arctic. It will stretch so far west to east and so deep into the south that tonight the estimate is most of the country, 240 million people, will be affected by this. There's no end in sight to America's big freeze with two-thirds of the country shivering through sub-zero temperatures, snow and ice. 26 states are recording temperatures below minus 17 degrees. Uh, gales will continue to whip across Scotland, the whole of Scotland. Warnings there that winds may exceed 100 miles an hour, so hurricane force winds. Um, there were record wind speeds recorded on Stornoway of 113 miles an hour. Now at its peak it knocked out 100,000 people's power across Scotland. Zero magnitude 3.5, the magnitude of this earthquake uh, last night. The epicenter being near the village of Cottesmore. But we start this new with a developing story out of Plainfield. That area was hit with another earthquake this morning. To New Zealand now, where the South Island was rocked this morning by a series of strong earthquakes. Plainfield just can't catch a break for the third time in the past few days. These strong earthquakes hit. This morning there was another one about 7.30. Residents in Plainfield are growing more concerned. Floods in the southern region of Malawi have killed almost 200 people and displaced more than 100,000. Large swaths of land remain submerged underwater. Weeks without rain and temperatures of around 40 degrees Celsius have dried out Sao Paulo's Cantarera reservoirs. We are experiencing the worst water crisis in the history. Water to 9 million people. An asteroid measuring about a third of a mile in diameter 
and a relatively close pass by Earth on Monday. Scientists even discovered that the asteroid had a moon of its own.